Has anybody here lied? Yeah, he's gonna say the same shit he said to show guys. You have you lied? Have you ever lied? Hands up if you have lied. I listen to you now. Have you lied? Have you lied? Have you ever lied? You lied now. You lied now. You lied. How many times have you lied? You lied now. How many times have you lied? In my life, I can't tell you. What does that make you? We can't tell you, man. We can't tell you. We told you. Let me read this. Jesus Christ. No man. Jesus Christ. Read the right book, man. No, I read my Bible. Read the right book, man. Let's read this. No. Beloved, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. How can we know Islam is not of God and Christianity is? It says this, try the spirits. If I know the spirit of God, every spirit, every spirit, they confess, they confess that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confessed that Jesus Christ has come of God. Now, now if you deny that Jesus is if you deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you miss the truth. If I give you a million pounds, but you don't have it, you've missed it. God gives you the truth, and that is Jesus Christ. Don't miss it. He died on that cross. Now there's a hell. There's a hell, there's a judgment to come. There is a hell. And God will judge everybody who breaks his law and who sins against him. God will judge. But Christ shed his blood and died on the cross to save you and to redeem you today and bring salvation in your life. How do you know that? How do I know? How do you know the Bible is written by God? How do you know it's factual? I know there are 300 prophecies in the Old Testament. Yeah, but they, they, they could all be made up. Let me finish it. There are 300 prophecies in the Bible and Jesus fulfills all those prophecies. No, it's just if you're taking, you're taking the Bible as a standard of truth, but you don't know if it's historically accurate. You might say that. You're right. I, I agree with you. It probably does say that, but how do you know that's actually true? Are you a Muslim? No, I'm an atheist. You're an atheist. Okay. Now, have you ever read any atheist? Have I ever read any atheist book? Yeah. Of course, an atheist book. Like Sam Harris? Yeah, of course I have. Yeah. You're a, and I, I wouldn't classify as that being an atheist book. That's more of a, a philosophical, scientific analysis. Sam Harris has wrote many books. He's written End of Faith. Yes, I've read I've, I've read that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you read Sam Harris and you read Richard Dawkins yeah. and you read Christopher Hitchens, yeah. you've read these books. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. When you read them on historical Jesus studies, how good are they? What do you mean on historical? Well, you're asking about evidences. What yeah. are the evidences of Jesus? Yeah. So let's look at the atheist literature. Have you read these books? So what are they saying about Jesus? And are they in touch with good, solid historical scholarship about Jesus? Well, no, but they're not commenting specifically on Jesus. They're talking more about the idea of God. Okay. And, and also the, the part that faith plays in everyday life and like in politics and things like that. Well, if you read, uh, let's be specific, if you read End of Faith, by Sam Harris, he specifically mentioned Jesus a number of times. If you read God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, he specifically goes out of his way to mention Jesus a number of times. If you read Christopher Hitchens, he mentions Jesus a number of times. So I'll ask you again, have you any idea how good, how able the modern atheists are in their literature when it comes to historical Jesus studies? Because you made the claim that this is not a historical book. And what I'm going to teach you and show you, God willing, is that the atheists have no room to talk when it comes to historical inquiry. And I picked three of your best atheist debaters and writers, three most influential books, and we'll look at those books and we'll see how they stand up to modern historical inquiry. Is that fair? Well, yeah, that's fair. But, so, but have this... any idea what they teach about Jesus? What they've engaged in in historical scholarship? Well, I don't know what they specifically say. Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Sam Harris is an atheist, but he's from the Institute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So he, he believes that when you look at Jesus, it's a book. You've got to look at it from a political perspective, Judaism. Yeah. Political perspective. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Hitchens quotes Bart Ehrman, right? And that's about it. Doesn't engage in modern scholarship. And Dawkins said that Jesus didn't exist and now he's changed his mind. Right? So that's about your best atheist in Britain and nowhere to be found in the scholarly academic world, right? Now, you say in the Bible 
is not historical. Let's use basic historical method, right? Do you know any of the historical methods that we use to inquire about history? Well, I mean, there are some parts of it which are probably historically factual, but I'm talking about more the superstitious things in there, like Jesus coming up from the dead, or you know, or, or Noah's Ark, or the fact, or Adam and Eve. None of all of these are scientifically improbable impossibilities, just from a logical point of view. Just from a scientific point of view, not even historical. Okay, well, unfortunately for you, we're doing history because you said it's not historical. That was your claim. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So what I've done, I went to your books and I showed you that they're not... But they're not my books. We don't, I don't think an atheist would live by a single book. Yeah, but it's the atheist <laughs> No, it's not, there's no atheist community. Atheists aren't, aren't politically organized, well, like Christians and Muslims are. Well, that's what atheists like to say, but there are three books that are influential in atheism, and influential, influential in our culture from atheists, and they are not in touch in any shape or form with historical inquiry about Jesus. And you said the Bible is not historical. Now, let me get back to what you said. When you talked about science and the Bible, you yeah. talked about history, and unfortunately for you, you have to debunk the Bible from a historical no, wait, 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 if, you're, if you're making the claim, the onus is on you to provide the evidence of that claim. If you don't, if you remember, you made a claim as well. You said the Bible's not historical, right? So a large you, part. Yeah, yeah, you made a claim. Yeah. I'm making a claim. It is. You made a claim. It isn't. So you believe Noah's Ark is true? Okay. So you have not provided any methodology in your historical inquiry. Before you look at the data, you have to have a method. So what is your method? Now let me finish. Let me finish. Your method at the moment is saying that miracles don't happen because miracles don't happen. But at the quantum level, if you go at the quantum level, past, past the quarks, past whatever after the quarks, you don't know what's going to pop into existence or not at the quantum level. And that's why science now works on probability, not certainty. Right? So what that means is you've got to be open to the possibility that something could pop in that you never, wait a minute, you never quantified. And what that means is you've got to look at the historical data to see whether it was or not. Now, if you want to do that, you've got to play fair. You've got to have fair methods to determine when you're inquiring something that is true. Not have a presupposition, I believe it's science, it's not scientific, therefore it can't be true. You, wait a minute, you've got to have fair methodology. I'll finish this quick. David Hume, who was an atheist, had five methodologies to inquire whether a miracle happened. And he inquired of miracles in the Middle Ages. Uh, sorry, in the 14th century, he's in the 17th century. And he inquired of miracles, and with his five criteria, he said miracles have happened. And he's an atheist. But then he said, even though my five criteria, the miracles have happened, they don't happen, because miracles can't happen. But honestly, he tried to find criteria. Now, what are your criteria to investigate that Jesus is not who he says he is and the claims of the Bible? What are your historical methods? Well, first of all, if you believe in Adam and Eve, do you believe in Adam and Eve? Being Absolutely. literal truth. So you believe that humans were, uh, were in existence throughout the, the lifespan of the Earth? Yeah. So you don't believe in evolution? I don't believe in evolution. So, okay, well, 90, almost all of the scientific community say that life evolved and wasn't, humans weren't in existence from the, the time that the Earth began. So, what, what counter evidence do you have to this? Right. And also, do you believe a man uh, managed to galvanize every species of animal and put them in an ark? I mean, do you believe that's actually true? And also, how you, I mean, you claim with, you say, say that you claim certainty that you believe in Adam and Eve and you believe in these stories, but you have no evidence to present. Okay, okay. Well, number, a couple of things. First of all, historical inquiry, you've got a method. You're, you're, you're not using method. Methods like. Uh, what method are you using? Multiple, you're, you're, attest okay. multiple attestation, enemy attestation. 
these are ways you find out whether something's happened in history, right? So that's a historical thing. When you're talking about evolution, we're talking about science. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's a different thing. We're talking about history. It's interlinked. No, we're talk, yeah, but we're talking about history, about Jesus, and now you want to talk about evolution. Evolution, yeah, because... I don't believe evolution, right, for the mechanism of evolution. The mechanism does not make sense to me. The mechanism not to you, but you how, but you don't have the scientific expertise to compete on that field. The mechanism is natural selection and mutation, would you agree? That's disputed. Natural selection is disputed. The fact that evolution happened is not disputed. What that, what's disputed is how it came about. Oh I know I know there's many discussions about the nuances. Don't yeah, worry about exactly, that. Yeah. But the general criteria, the general structure is mutation and natural selection. You might you might give tweak it a little bit, they're trying to tweak it and give variations on it. But that's basically it. I don't agree with that mechanism. It does not make but sense. It's not about agreement, it's a it's a statement of fact. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's a matter of fact. Okay. You can't have an opinion on a fact. It's like if I said to you the sun the uh, sun goes around the earth, that opinion has no val validity if I don't have any evidence. It doesn't have an uh, opinion unless I make an argument. I've not made my argument yet. So. You, well, you, no, but you said that you believe... No, no, but you said you believe in Alan and Eve. So you're, you're, you're stating that as a fact. Now, if you have no evidence... Well, I'm willing to then, evidence. Let me, let me finish the argument. I haven't finished the argument. First, I'm debunking evolution, and then I'll go on you, to Yeah, but you said you don't believe in evolution. But you can't not believe in something, which is a fact. It's like if I said I don't believe that you exist. Can, can I finish? But that would not change the fact that you do exist. Can I finish? Just because I hold that opinion. Can I finish? Would you, yes, you're go ahead. Man, you've taken a word believe, and we're only a quarter in the discussion. You've got to let me flesh things out before you jump in and interpret, yeah? Alright, is that fair? Yeah, no, no, yeah, okay. but that's what you said. I don't believe in evolution because it is not logical. It is logical. <laughs> Natural selection and mutation. What is the mathematical probability of natural selection and mutation creating the complexity of life that we have today? I, I, mean, I say it's 100% because we're here. So by definition, we came about through evolution now. So we are here. Yes, it's a circle it's argument, circle but argument. you saying what is the percentage? So you can say that some things have extreme chances, but they still happen. Okay. Yeah, less since he won the Premier League. When we're talking about evolution, I'm on about macroevolution, not microevolution. No, I understand. Yeah. But, but, but the... when I finish, because he came in, microevolution is changes, small changes over time. Macroevolution is life changes over time. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And I, I, if you calculate it, there were mathematicians done in 1960, and you can get it, you can get the information from Craig Manson, who's a philosopher. Yeah. But there were mathematicians in 1960 who worked out, they were not Christian, they were they were people who were secular, and they worked out the mathematical probability of macroevolution, and they said it's just an, an impossibility. And the, the, the... In the 60s. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so, what happened was that information didn't get out, it was squashed by the evolution. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What was the book? What was the book? I read a counter. Like, I read a book countering these arguments, and but I remember reading, and I saw, you know, it's like more than they added to the universe. I've given, way. I've given you a specific source: Google, Greg Manson, and and Google, Google Mathematics and Evolution. That's my. It doesn't specific. change the fact. No, it's not. Just because no. someone wrote something. No, you're not listening. No. If you make a claim, you've got to provide evidence, and I've given you an evidence. I've given you a source. But no, no, you've given evidence on my point. You, I've given you've, you've given, you've given, e yeah, you've given a source of someone making a comment about it but no matter what anyone you says no, 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 I've got my source, it's the, the scientific, the whole scientific community. Did you read a GCSE have you, have, you, have you got a peer review? Can you give me a peer review? I don't need to give any review, I'm no. not a scientist. Can you give me... But I take the word of the, the millions of scientists who say it's... Okay. It is an authority. Do you, um, if I, do, you, do, you, do you respect Karl Popper? Karl Popper? The falsification theory. Do you respect Karl Popper? I, I don't know enough about him besides right. his falsification theory. Karl Popper theory. was, but, one of, it was the, probably one of the greatest philosophers in science. 
in the philosopher of science, yeah? Yeah. The scientific method. Now he said that it was not science, evolution was not science, it was not falsifiable, right? And he said, I, I don't agree with it, I don't, I don't think it's, it's intellectually credible. And he was the greatest philosopher in the 20th century on the philosophy of science. Now, here's the point. He reneged on it. He actually reneged on it. Right? He went back on it and said, no, evolution is cohesion. Mm -hmm. Now, you know why he did that? Because of pressure of his colleagues. Near his death, near the, end of, the near the end of his death, because he was ending his career, he felt courage enough to go back to his original statement. And he came to the point again before he died, and he said that evolution is not intellectually credible because it's not falsifiable. And that was one of the greatest philosophers in science, in scientific method, right? right. So have you, can you give me a... Do you know of any people, if you're doing scientific inquiry, yeah. if it's science, you always have people trying to argue against it in some way or, or find a different path. Can you name me one PhD that has tried to debunk evolution and that has been peer reviewed? No, I can't, I can't name you something So it's like not that. falsifiable. But, but no, 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 but the, it's not science. It is, is the theory of gravity falsifiable? It, no, no, it's just no, Is no. the fact that the Earth goes around the sun falsifiable? Wait a minute. The quantum level, we used to talk about science was absolutely certain. Now we talk about science is probably 70%, only 70%. There is no scientific theory today that is 100% certain. Yeah, of course. No, there's nothing that's 100% certain. No, most scientific theories, for example, evolution, are about 70%. Right? No, I mean it's seventy percent probable. That's the fact, right? So you always have to have a bit of humility. No, you have to have a bit of humility to, to, to the possibility that you could be wrong. Right? And so, well, by that same logic, so should you. Yeah. But you believe so, in certainty of your mind. If you're intellectually credible, and if you were so strong in your position as evolutionists, then you would welcome academic challenges to your position. Of course. So how come but there what? is no... Wait a minute. How come that if I was a professor and I was an evolutionist, but suddenly felt that I don't agree with evolution, I found some new research, and I write a PhD, or I write a peer review, how come it would not be accepted, not even to discuss in the academic world? You can discuss it. No, you can't. Yes, yes, so can. can. Have you read Dawkins, what he says about, about um, it, the guy who, who wrote the Darwin's Black Box, is it the uh, B? The, you know, the, the intelligent design guy. Have you read him trying to get him to lose his job? Have you read about how scientists lose their jobs at Bristol and other places where if they disagree with the evolutionist paradigm, they lose their job? Is that intellectually credible or is that... A, a, well, I'm, not, I'm not defending no, that, is that. Is that... Or is that fascism where people claim an authority that evolution is true, but actually they can't defend it because if, if you do, you lose your job. How can that be intellectually credible? No, I'm, I'm not, yeah, but I'm not defending that. No. You're have making you heard, me defend a position I don't know. Have you heard of the, I think it's the Samothian uh, controversy? There was a, a guy who worked in America. If you type the Samothian controversy, intelligent design, there was a guy who was a, not a Christian, not a, not a design, intelligent design person. He was an evolutionist, but he ran the museum in America, main museum, right? And an intelligent design professor wrote a peer review. I think he's called Mayer. He wrote a peer review article on intelligent design. And this guy wanted it published in the magazine of the museum. The guy lost his job for doing it, for trying to encourage intellectual debate. Have you heard of Thomas Nagel? Thomas Nagel is an atheist, but he's doubting evolution. He doesn't think evolution is intellectually viable. Have you seen what's happened to him for the last 20, well, the last 15 years, because he started to doubt evolution? The atheist community have had their knives out and attacked him mercilessly because he's doubting evolution. He's not said he's got a different paradigm, but he's questioning it. And he's one of the greatest philosophers alive today and he's doubting evolution, and yet he That's has had to people, wait a minute. He has had to hold on to his academic credibility because it, atheists have gone at him like the Catholic Church went after the Protestants. So all I'm saying, bro, all I'm saying, if evolution is so true, so correct, why is it 
that you're so scared of an intellectual challenge. Professors losing their jobs at top academic institutions because they want to promote a dialogue with intellectual Like I said, I don't defend that, so I, I welcome an intellectual discussion about it, of course. So, so explain to me, has your DNA got information in it? I guess so, I mean, yeah, it's a scientific information. How much information has the DNA got, do you know? Well, I, don't, I can't tell you. Uh, about, precise, about three billion bits of information, right? In the Psychopedia Britannica, there's information. Now, would you say a mind put that information in? Yes. Yeah. Now, there's more information in your... The Encyclopedia is not a self-evolving um, organism. Right. Well, your DNA has more information than the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah, but it's, it's a different kind of information. Right. So I would say, where there's mind, there's information. Without mind, there's no information. Okay. Well, you can hold that view. Right. <laughs> so, so how do you get information from non-mind? No mind. There was no mind at the beginning of the universe. Yeah. And then information. I would say, when there's a mind, produces information. Mind, God, information, DNA. No mind. No mind, but you don't know. Producing that. information. Yeah, but you're, you're presuming that information necessarily has to come from the mind. But we don't okay. know if that's necessarily true. Is information logical? Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's logic. It from, it's logic mind. Is logic mind? Is logic part of the way the mind works? Does yes. the mind work logic? Yeah, of course. So we have logic and mind. Well, un well unless you're, unless you have a mental disability. But Which some people are born with. But you would agree logic and mind work together. Yeah. Logic and mind, yeah? yeah? Yes. So you, you agree that DNA has logic within it. Yeah. Logic yeah. Forces, Which has evolved so over time. So mind. Well, but it hasn't always been like that. DNA has evolved over millions of years. They didn't pop into existence. According like to your mind. circular argument and assumption. No, it's not a circular argument. You, you're, you're presuming that the DNA was a pre-existing... It was a mechanism, but that's not true. It evolved over time. So you're assuming that too. I'm not assuming that. I'm, I'm taking the what the bio, the what bio, any academic that. study today, where bacteria change from being bacteria to something more than bacteria. Well, 99% of the scientific community say that. Show me an academic study anywhere where bacteria has been changed to something else. Because what you'll find, bacteria is still bacteria. Finches are still finches. Nobody's seen anywhere macroevolution. You're, oh, assuming, you you're, no, assuming, you you're assuming. You're assuming. You're assuming. You're assuming DNA has evolved. You're assuming that. I'm not assuming. I'm taking. I'm taking. The, You've never, you're taking authority, not actual argument and logic and evidence. But the, but the people who have that authority have, have used evidence to back up that way. Well, if you cannot quote a paper or any information about bacteria, because that's the main main thing that we can look at, because you can multiply bacteria thousands of times, and it's equal to to, to uh, it's equal to uh, many many years. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you one question that atheists can't deal with. Do you believe all that exists is the material, like matter and energy? As far as we're aware, yes. Yeah. Is logic material or immaterial? Immaterial. But you've just said all that we know is matter well, and energy. A, no, the, you're talking about the physical world. Also, there's an immaterial world. No, no, no. The immaterial world is, is constructs formed by us. So is logic immaterial or is it a construct by us? It's, well, the, the term logic itself and what we understand of it is constructed yeah. by us. So the law of non-contradiction? Sorry? The law of non-contradiction, is it material or immaterial? I don't think, I don't think it's binary. I think it, it's, it's linked to the material. So it, link, it links to the brain, which is material. sex with logic? To an extent, yes. Can you eat yeah. logic? Can I, can you? Can you eat logic? No, but it's an abstract concept. Can you taste? It's an abstract concept. Yeah. Yeah, so it's immaterial, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, but you said that all that we know is the material. Well, and in terms of the physical world, yes. But yeah. obviously there's abstract can, emotions and concepts. Can, can I have your cake and eat it? You said that there is all that exists is the material, which is matter and energy. And now you're accepting, you accept that logic's immaterial. Yeah. Right. So how do you get the immaterial in a material universe? I don't know. Well, we that, that's, got the answer. That's, God. You think you have the answer. God is immaterial, bro. <laughs> you, you we can answer logic. God bless you. God bless you. Man. All right. God bless you, man. Jesus Christ shed his blood, gave his life for you today. There is a heaven and a hell, my friends. That's why we're here today. A heaven and a hell. Now.
On Judgment Day, how will you face hell? On Judgment Day, how will you face hell? God is a consuming fire. Have you ever lied, sir? 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 Yes. How many times have you lied? Every day. Every day. If you meet God, what is He going to do with your lies? I'll tell you what He's done already. When Jesus Christ came, He is the Son of God, the Lamb of God, and when He was nailed to that cross, He died on that cross for you, to save you from your lies and the judgment to come. He took the punishment for you. Now, I'm, I see many Muslims here today. I'm going to let you ask me a question. Ask me a question if you want to ask me. Do you want to ask me a question? Pardon? I am fine, sir. I've had a lovely day. And it's all the better for meeting you. I can see you every day, huh? Come every day. Every day. I like you, sir. God bless you. But Jesus Christ died to save you today. Be discerning. Be discerning. There is an antichrist. And that antichrist denounces the Son of God. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, it is Antichrist, it is against God. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. And if you don't want to go to hell, and if you want to be saved today, you've got to believe in Jesus Christ. You, are your sins forgiven? Are your sins forgiven today, sir? Are your sins forgiven? Yes. Huh? Are your sins forgiven? Yep. They got the sins forgiven. If, uh, if Jesus is the uh, Son of God, He is God, right? Yeah. Okay, so if He got, why He killed Himself? Why He okay. just can't uh, forgive good us? Good he question. can. I'll, I'll answer. Very good question. Very good. Let me answer that. Say this one, my God. Do you believe? I'll answer it. Well, let me answer. It. Do you believe the Quran is eternal? That came from it heaven. Quran came from heaven, yeah, yeah, and it became on the earth and it became paper Quran yeah, listen, yeah, listen, yeah, but Quran in heaven the Word of God you believe came down through Gabriel through Prophet Muhammad and then the Quran became paper now if I burn the paper does that destroy the Word of God now listen to this we believe Jesus is the eternal word not the Quran and the eternal word Jesus came down not in paper but in a man. Now if you say the paper burns but it doesn't destroy God's word, listen, 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 let me finish. If the man Jesus dies, it does just not destroy the word of God. For Jesus is the word of God. So why did Jesus die? The man died, but God cannot die. Just like the Quran, you burn the Quran, it doesn't destroy the word. Jesus is the word of God. You destroy Jesus, the man, it cannot destroy the God part of man. Does that make sense? Well, Jesus died and rose again. Where's Muhammad now? Muhammad in heaven. No, Muhammad's in the ground. Muhammad died and Muhammad is somewhere in Arabia in the ground. He's dead. The bones are there, bro. Where's the soul? But he's not uh, with us now. No, Where is Muhammad's soul? Where's Muhammad's soul? Muhammad's soul is God. He's not with God, bro. He wasn't born again, was he? I didn't know that Jesus he was born again. Jesus. Muhammad was not born again. He didn't trust Jesus. Yeah. But here, my friend, here, my friend. Did he make Jesus Christ his Lord and Savior? Here, my, he never did. He, here, my friends. Help. Here, my friends. Here, my friends. If you died tonight, I've come all the way from Manchester today. Right? I like to debate, but I'm not here to win debates. You know what I'm here to do? I'm here to win your soul. Amen. I'm here to help you to know the salvation if you died tonight listen if you died tonight the fire of god who is a holy god that fire will come upon you and you'll end up in hell i was speaking to an ex-muslim the other day before he became a christian he was a muslim and he went to bed at night and he said i used to go to bed fearing hell oh hell i'm gonna go to hell and one day he learned that jesus died on a cross for him he gave his life for him and now he doesn't fear hell he has peace do you 
Do you know peace in your heart? Do you know peace in your heart? Do you know peace in your heart? Are you forgiven for your sin? If your dad was here today and you were dying of kidney failure and your dad said, you can have one of my kidneys, would you take it? Yeah. If you had, if you was dying, if you was dying and the doctor wanted to give you medicine to save you, would you take the medicine? Yeah. You're dying right now. You're, you're dying and moving over into hell. And the medicine for you today is Jesus Christ.